Hello, this is TJR, and welcome to Album of the Week. If this is your first time, welcome. This is the weekly show where I recommend a new release album, provided, of course, there is a new release for the week that I can recommend. Last time, our Album of the Week was Homegrown by Neil Young. This week's Album of the Week is Hate for Sale by The Pretenders. But before we go further, if you like this type of content, please be sure to click like, click subscribe, and be sure to click the notification icon so you can know when I release new videos. Also, if you want to take that extra step, you can go to the Patreon page. Patron supporters receive early access to selected videos and exclusive Patreon content. Okay, let's get to it. Hate for Sale is the band's 11th album, and it features the return of original drummer Martin Chambers. Now, I would like to be able to say that this is one of the best albums I have ever heard from The Pretenders, but I can't, because I have never been a serious Pretenders fan. I have never listened to any of their albums in their entirety, and I am only familiar with their hits. I clicked on this album on a lark, and yet it didn't take me long to become aware of the fact that I was listening to a band in the act of killing it. Chrissy Hyde is in her late 60s, and I have no idea how old the other members of the band are, but they are not young men any more than I am. And yet there is a youthful flair and snarl to this album. You can hear that snarl on the album's opening title track, Hate for Sale, which is explosive, as well as on the album's other rockers, Turf Accountant Daddy, I Don't Know When to Stop, and Junkie Walk. The band shows its R&B influences with the early 60s-influenced soul ballad, You Can't Hurt a Fool, and its Laurel Canyon influences on Maybe Love is in New York City. They also deliver the goods with a pop-punk outing, Didn't Want to Be This Lonely. I am normally not a ska fan, but even the ska-influenced Lightning Man won me over with its cool and spacey vibe. The album closes with a somber piano-driven ballad, Crying in Public. Hate for Sale features 10 songs, and each one is co-written by Chrissy Hind and guitarist James Walburn, who also delivers some very effective lead guitar work. I also want to mention that while I am not familiar with the band's albums, I am more than familiar with their hits and have even covered a few of them in different bands. And I have to say that Chrissy Hines' voice has not aged one iota. In fact, it is some of the best vocals that I've ever heard from her. At 30 minutes in length, the album is lean and mean. Like I said, I would like to say this is one of their best, but I can't because I'm not familiar enough with their back catalog to be able to. But listening to Hate for Sale, I can't help but get the feeling that those who are better qualified than me to evaluate the band's catalog will at the very least call it a damn fine effort, if not one of their best. So have you heard this album yet? Do you plan on listening to it? And has this review influenced you to check it out? Leave a comment and let me and everyone else here know what you think. And what new release from this week should I be talking about next week? Everybody take care. I hope you all stay safe and healthy. Bye-bye.